Hello everyone, welcome to my full stack React chat app course in which I'm going to be building a chat app from the ground up using Chakra UI, Firebase as well as Next.js. So first I'm going to show you a demo of what we're going to be building at the end of this course as well as uh, I want to mention that the code for all of the videos is going to be linked in the description so it's going to be a github site you can just go and check out the code anytime you want to. So on the left hand side, I'm going to sign in with Albert Einstein and on the right hand side, I'm going to sign in with uh, Max Planck. So you can see that we're using Google Authentication that will be provided by Firebase. You can start a new chat here with Planck. I just have to type in the email and instantly we can just send a message. Hi, hello, how do you do? And I can click on Einstein's uh, in in the sidebar here and you can see the chat shows up and say I'm doing fine. Thank you And you can see it appears uh, in both screens and I can even say uh, This is a really really long message so you can read it You can see it appears in real time. So we're doing this using firebase. I can show you the firestore console here I can refresh this and you can see how it works in the back end. So we're gonna have a collection in firestore called chats and then inside we're gonna have a document which has a randomly generated ID and inside of this document we're gonna have the list of users who are involved in this chat and then we're gonna have a sub collection called messages which stores all of the messages per documents so each message is actually a document inside of Cloud Firestore and you can see that we have the sender we have the text itself and we have the timestamp of when the message was sent and right now we have three chats here so there are three documents in this messages sub collection I can add a fourth chat and you can see the fourth chat appears here and you can see the text and timestamp so this is pretty much how the Firebase backend works as well as how the front end looks like and in the next video we're just gonna start building the app itself Hello everyone, in this video we're going to go through the steps to set up our development environment so we can start working on our chat app. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a folder called chat app. Let's go into the folder and go to our terminal and cd into the chat app and run yarn create next dash app and dot. So this will this dot here means that we're going to create a next app template in this current directory and I'm just going to let this run for a few minutes. And it seems like the command is done running, so I'm going to go and right click and open this with VS Code and drag the window to the right monitor, wait, there we go. And I'm going to run a terminal window here and just install Chakra UI. So right now I'm just going to go over to the Chakra UI documentation site and copy this command here and paste it inside of our terminal and let that run. So this line here will install Chakra UI and all of the components that's needed and we'll go to the pages directory in the meantime and get rid of all of the junk that we don't need here. So here I don't need the default Next.js template, I'm just going to get rid of that. I also do not need the styles and image uh, imports here, so let me get rid of that as well. I'm going to go to app.js and get rid of this global styles because we don't need the default styles that Next.js provides and just nice the chakra ui components are done installing and that's it for this video in the next video we're going to we're going to create our login component uh, based on our sample site so this i'm going to just log out here so this this screen right here this is the login screen we'll be doing this in the next video hello everyone in this video we're going to be creating this login component that you see right here and I'm first going to start yarn dev to start a development server here in VS Code. I'm going to refresh my localhost 3000 and see that we get an error. So I think we have to go to index.js here and get rid of this class name uh, because we're using styles.container but we're not importing the styles. So let's just get rid of that and refresh and see if we still get any errors. So we don't. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my root directory and create a folder called component and let's create login.js and let's export default function login and let's just return login for now 
So I'm going to go and add login inside of underscore app.js and the reason why I'm not creating a dedicated route or URL for this login component is because I want the user to see this login component no matter what URL they're on and no matter what page they're on as long as they're not authenticated, right? So I just want to show this login page no matter where they are in the site. So instead of just returning component like that, I'm just going to return um, login, let's import that, login backslash. Alright, so this is, uh, in the future we're going to add like an if else statement to say if the user is authenticated, then you're going to return the component or else we're just going to return login if the user is not authenticated. So let's, we see the login here which is working, which is nice. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this to some brackets and let's add like um, head. So head is something that we're going to import from next because you see that we have, if I take this browser here and I expand this, you're going to see that we have localhost uh, colon 3000 as our title and that's not just, that's just, that looks ugly. So I'm just going to do title here and it says login and let's save that and you can see now it says login so we are no longer having that um, ugly localhost 3000 thingy that's going on there. Alright, so now that's done, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get chat icon here and paste it inside of our code. So chat icon is actually an icon uh, from Chakra UI, it's Chakra UI icons. It basically is the icon that you see here, this white icon. And we're going to have to import that from Chakra UI slash icons, but we have to first install Chakra UI slash icons. So I'm going to go look uh, for using Chakra UI icons there and run the yarn installation command. So let's stop the server for now and let's install Chakra UI slash icons. Uh, I'm going to show you the chat icon. This is how it looks like. So this is the chat icon here that I was talking about. I'm going to go back to our local host and let's yarn dev again and let's import chat icon. So import chat icon. Alright, so now I can save this and I actually need to wrap everything in a React fragment uh, which is what I'm going to do and let's space it out nicely. Alright, let's save this and we are going to see nothing because the color is white. I can change this to black and you see the chat icon right there. Uh, I'm just going to change this back to white because I'm going to encompass this chat icon in a box and let's do box and we have to import box so let's import box from Chakra UI and let's give the box a background color so we can see our chat icon which is white right now let's add a background color of like blue maybe we give it a strength of 5000 and right now we don't see anything and that's to be expected because if I go and close this go back to our app.js and the login component here is actually not uh, encompassed by the chakra prov provider component so the chakra provider component is something that is very easy to forget so we have to import the chakra chakra provider is it not going to show up? alright so maybe I should just do like chakra provider and VS Code will import that for me and let's move the login inside of the provider and let's save this and there we go now we see our box so don't forget to add the chakra provider every time you're creating a new component inside of underscore app.js so with that I'm gonna go ahead and do the width it should be fit content so it doesn't expand to the full width so we're gonna be building something like this I'm just not going to do the gradient because gradients are kind of complicated. I'm just going to use a solid background of blue. And let's see what else do we need. Alright, so we're going to need like some padding because right now it's just stuck, you know, to the edges of the icon. So let's give it a padding of 5, much nicer. And if we look at our example, we actually want rounded corners, right? And in Chakra UI, there's something called rounded that we can use and we can set a size. We can like MD for medium, SM for small, you can even go XL or even 3XL for really rounded corners and you can see that's our rounded corner and um, that's pretty much it for our box and our chat icon so the, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a button down here uh, let's add a button that says sign in with Google that's what it says right so in the example you can see sign in with Google that's what it says and we can give this uh, box shadow to make it look nicer, I'm going to give it 
a medium box shadow. You can see that the box shadow comes up now. I'm also going to give this some box shadows. So I'm just give it a box shadow of medium again in the box. All right. So let's refresh this, and it looks nice. All right. So now that we have these two components, we want to center this in the middle of the screen, just like how we're doing it here. We want to center this so it looks nicer. So to center these two elements, I'm going to import something from Chakra called Center, and we can. Uh, we can actually just do it here, right here, center, and let's move everything into this center component, and let's space it out nicely. Alright, so you can see that it's now centered horizontally, but it's not centered vertically, and to do that, I'm just going to give this center component a height of 100% view height, and this should now be centered in the middle of the screen. Alright, but now, it's actually aligned um, horizontally, it's, it's stacked horizontally. We don't want that. We want, to, we want it to be vertical, just like this. So how we can do that is by importing stack from Chakra UI. And we can go ahead and make a stack. Uh, and put everything in that stack. Like this. And If you guys don't know any of the things I'm doing, you can go to the Chakra UI documentation. It's actually really good and you can just read up like what is BG color, what is P, P is padding. You can just uh, find everything in the documentation. So now we, our stack is working nicely. It's kind of stacked um, uh, vertically now, but um, it's aligned on the left-hand side, which is not what I want. I want it to be aligned centered. So I can just say align equals to center, and it's going to be centered like that, which is nice. And um, I'm actually going to give this stack some background color because, as you can see, we have like this grayish background color in our example. Let's give it a background color, uh, gray. Uh, let's set it to like 600. And there we go. We still need some padding though, because um, let's give it a padding of 16, and that will look much nicer. And of course, we want it to be rounded just like the icon. We give it 3XL, and that will be rounded. And what else do we need? So we need spacing in between these two components because they're just stuck together right now. I'm going to give it spacing of 12 inside of this stack attribute so now that that looks much nicer I'm going to give it a box shadow as well box shadow uh, let's just give it 3xl again uh, just actually we're just going to give it um, MD or a lar large maybe yeah let's just give it a large box shadow and this looks pretty similar it doesn't look 100% the same because we, we have different gradients so we just use a solid color but this is pretty much it. We've officially completed our login component and this looks nice. All that we need to do right now is implement the functionality to this sign in with Google button. But we're going to do that the next time after we're done with all of the interface, uh, all of the Chakra UI stuff. All right. In the next video, we're going to be doing the layout of the chat once we sign in. So we're going to sign in here in the demo and we're going to have a layout like this. So this layout is what we're going to be creating in the next video. We're going to have a sidebar, and we're going to have a chat area, and then we're going to have, inside of the chat bar, chat bar we're going to have like the avatar, the name, the logout button, the new chat, and everything there. Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll be building the sidebar of our chat application in React. So this is how the chat bar would look like. There's an avatar, some text, a logout button, a new chat button, and a whole list of chats or contacts that you can message. So this is our current project and how it looks like. It's the login uh, component from our previous video. I'm just going to go over to our app.js here and just just take out this login uh, component right here. And I'm just going to give like a sidebar for now. Temporarily, while we're working on the sidebar, I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to go to the components folder and create sidebar.js. Let's export default um, Default sidebar. Okay, and I'm just going to return sidebar as a start. I forgot the function here. All right, let's refresh this and see if it works. Uh, sidebar is not defined. So we have to import sidebar from components and it should work now. All right, so this is all good. We're just going to go to the sidebar component now and start building our actual sidebar. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to return a flex component, which is something that you're going to import from Chakra UI slash layout. And 
uh, in this this flex component is going to be our the, the parent container for our sidebar. So to make things easier while we we are developing this, I'm just going to give it a background color so you can visualize what's actually going on. Let's give it a light blue, and you can see that there's no sidebar. There's nothing right now because we haven't given it a uh, width. So I'm going to give it a width of 300 pixels. We still see nothing because uh, there's no height. So I'm just going to give it a height of 100% view height, and now we should see our sidebar. So if I take this to the full screen, you can see the sidebar is at the side like that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give, give it some borders. So I'm going to give border end of one pixel and make it a solid border and I'm going to have the border color be gray. So gray, 200. And let's, you, you can't really see the border right now, but if I get rid of the blue background, you can see that there's the actual border, this, uh, this thin line right here. All right, so let's get our color back for easier visualization. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, flex items inside of this parent container. So I'm going to do flex. And so let's look at what we're building here. The first thing I'm going to build is this top barrier right here that has the avatar and the username as well as the logout button. So I'm going to give this flex item uh, height of about, let's make it 81 pixels. And let's give it background color as well so that we can visualize it. So red of 100, that should look like pink. And we don't see anything right now, do we? So I don't think it has a width, which means I'm going to just give it 100% width so that it fills the whole width of the parent container, which has like 300 pixels. All right, so it's looking good right now. I can go to full screen and you can see how it, that actually looks like. So that's pretty much it for the layout of the sidebar. Now all that's left for us to do is fill in the items, the contents inside of the sidebar. So the first thing I'm going to do is deal with this profile picture. So to do the profile picture, I'm just going to import the avatar component from Chakra UI. And I'm going to self-close that. So I'm just going to give it a dummy source so it gives us the default profile picture. And now that it's, it's actually stuck on top of the screen and I don't want that, I want it to be centered. So I can do align items, but because we are using Chakra UI, we don't have to type align items. We can just do align, which is the short form for align items. And I can do center. It's going to be centered like that, which is nice. I'm also going to do the logout button right now, which is the button you see right here on the right hand side. So let's give it uh, an icon button from Chakra UI as well. So let the, an icon button needs an icon, which is what I'm going to provide. And I'm going to get the icons from Chakra UI icons, but I don't think there's a suitable icon here in this library, and I don't want to install a brand new icon library just for this single icon. So I'm just going to pick this arrow left icon, which is not that suitable, but we'll just have to make do. So let's use that icon from uh, Chakra. So let's import that and let's refresh. You can see that the icon button shows up, but it's a bit too huge, too large. So let's set the size to be small as well. I'm going to um, give it is round to make it rounded. And let's save this. You can see it's now rounded and slightly smaller, which is nice. But I want it to be on the right hand side. So the cheapest and dirtiest way to do that would be to just use something called um, justify content. We can justify it to be um, space between, and that will go to the far right hand side. We can also combine this to be in the, uh, on the same line because it's the same group. I'm gonna give it a padding of three and save. And the next thing I'm going to do is add a text here so that we can display the username, which is something we're going to import from Chakra UI. Let's just give it a dummy username for now. And let's save that. Okay, so this is all right, but it's kind of in the middle. And if I look at our sidebar here, we don't want the text to be in the middle. We want it to be slightly to the left, so it's grouped with the avatar. So. I can accomplish that by using another flex container here. Let's move those two elements in. And let's give this flex a line of center so the text isn't like skewed to the top. Much better. Let's give this avatar a margin end of three, maybe. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is add this new chat button right here. So I'm gonna comment out the red and the blue 
so you won't see the red and blue and we're gonna have to add a border here let's just give it border bottom equals to one pixel solid and give it a similar border color of gray 200 and paste so we get our border now and I'm also gonna add like the new chat button so I've got I'm gonna have to import that from uh, button from at chakra UI slash react there we go and let's come down here below this flex group because this flex group is um, if I'm not wrong yeah this flex group is for this uh, top bar right there so let's just add a, bot a button down here that says new chat and we should see that appear but it's gonna appear at the side because this is display flex so we can go to the parent flex container and just go direction equals to column and to appear down there. I'm also going to give this button uh, let's give this button a margin of 5 units as well as padding. I'm going to give it a padding of 4 and you should see that look much nicer right now. So now if I go back to my reference you can see that we're going to have to do the individual chats here that you can click on and go to the specific chats. So I'm going to wrap everything in a flex container because you can see we're going to have multiple elements which is an avatar and as well as a text so let's add the avatar and avatar is a self-closing tag we can also give it a dummy source and see how that looks like right now all right so we're gonna give this flex uh, hover equals to um, background of gray dot 100 so if I hover my mouse you can see it becomes gray and uh, I want to also make the mouse the cursor so cursor to be pointer because if you see right now my mouse hovers and it doesn't look like something clickable because the mouse is still a normal cursor but if I save this and this becomes a pointer when I hover on, the, on top of it so let's also add like text that says uh, user at gmail.com for now and there's the text so we might also want to give this flex container uh, an align of center to center the items vertically and there we go and let's give this avatar some margins so margin and equals to three units oops what did I do three units that looks much better we also want to give this flex container some padding because right now it looks uh, it looks like when I'm hovering on top of it, it looks like it's just restricted by that avatar's height so let's give it a padding of uh, let's see how much padding should we give maybe we should give like three so at this stage you can already see that this component actually feels quite clickable it looks like something that you can click because when I hover my mouse becomes a pointer and the background changes but the thing is it's not done yet it may look done but if I duplicate this multiple times and save it you can see that it goes way past the screen and we're gonna scroll the entire page if we have too many users and that's probably most likely gonna happen in a real real uh, application app uh, so I'm just gonna scroll up and get rid of all of these. Let's fix this. We don't want a whole page to scroll We just want this sidebar this panel here to scroll So how I can fix that is I'm first gonna take this out and put it in its own component so const chat equals to an arrow function Let's return Let's return this component like this And there we go and then here. I'm just gonna put like the chat component so to fix this we're gonna use flex again and let's wrap this component in the flex container and so what we're gonna do with this flex is give it an overflow x of scroll so if I put this then it becomes that I'm gonna just put a lot of chats down here to see how it how it uh, looks like and you can see that it's starting to stack horizontally which is not what we want so we can give this flex direction of column to make it stack vertically. So now the scroll is working exactly as we, we want it to. It's just scrolling in this small section here and not the entire page. But the scroll bar is still kind of jarring. And we can get rid of the scroll bar by using the scroll bar with CSS property. And this allows us to set the scroll bar, scroll bar width to none. But the thing is we can't just do like scroll bar with equals to none like this because this is not a is this is not a valid prop to the flex chakra ui component so instead we can use this thing called this the sx prop uh, provided by chakra ui to allow us to directly override a css property that may not be included as one of the props of the component 
So the way we can do that is do sx equals to a, an object that has scroll bar width and we can set that to none. And once I save, you can see instantly we get rid of the scroll bars, but we can still scroll. And with that, we're pretty much done with the sidebar. I can go to full screen and you can see it works just the same. So in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can build out the skeleton structure for this right hand side here, the chat page. Hello everyone, in today's chapter, we will be coding the UI for the chat area that you see here. So we have a top bar, we have some chat area as well as the bottom bar. But before I start doing this, it's worth noting the URL. It's basically the domain name slash chat slash whatever ID the current chat is. So to do that, I'm going to go to my pages here and create a folder called chat. And to collect the URL, the dynamic URL ID here, what we can do is we can go ahead and add square brackets and then id.js. So this is basically a Next.js thing in which we can use to collect the dynamic URL here. All right, so let's export default function um, chat here. Let's spell that properly. And let's return a chat message just for now. So now I should just go here and type slash chat slash some random ID. And we're gonna get the same thing here. We're not gonna get our chat. And that's because in our app.js, we, uh, we are returning the sidebar component no matter what the route is. So to fix that, we can just render, we can just return the component from the props that we're getting from Next.js instead of just hard coding the sidebar in. And now we should see the chat appear. And there's one thing I want to fix here is that in the chat area, we still want the sidebar to show up, even though we are in the chat area. So what we can do is we can go and import the sidebar. And we can return the sidebar here. So let's return. I'm going to wrap everything in the flex container. And let's put like the sidebar here. There we go. So now we have our sidebar. And there's one thing I want to fix is that in the sidebar component, we have our height of 100 view height, 100% view height here in the sidebar. So instead of putting putting it here in the sidebar component, I'm going to instead put it here in the parent component, that, which is the flex component. So let's place that here. And now we should see that everything works. And the next thing we are going to do is the top bar here. So you see this top bar? Let's make that. So to make the top bar, we're first going to have to partition this page into two separate sections because we're going to have the left section for the sidebar and the right section for the chat area. So I'm going to go here and make another flex container just right underneath the sidebar. And we're going to give this container a background color so it's easier to see what we're doing. So blue of 100, and now we don't see anything because there's the width of 0. And also we have to specify the direction here in the parent flex container to be... Actually, I don't think we need direction since we're, going, we're doing that horizontally. So I just have to set, specify like a width. So to do a width, I'm just going to make it flex 1 so it can automatically grow to fill the entire width. So now we have that. Right, that's cool. So now that we have that, we can just get rid of the background color because we know that it's working just as intended. And inside of this flex container, we're going to have three other flex containers, which is the one for top bar, one for middle chat area, and one for the bottom bar. So I'm first going to work on the top bar. Uh, we can actually just do like top bar, which is a component, and we can make that component outside here. So const top bar equals to an arrow function that returns a flex container that contains an avatar and some heading. So let's just do avatar. There we go. And we can have a dummy source for now. Let's see how that looks like. We are also going to have to style this flex uh, container. So we can give it like a background of gray, strength of 100. And that doesn't look right. So it, that's doing, because it's having 100% height, we can specify what, what height we're going to want, which is 81 pixels. If I'm not wrong, that's the height of the, the bar on the right-hand side as well. And then let's have um, width of 100%. See how that looks. All right, that's much nicer. And then let's align everything to the center. So align center, so the avatar goes to the middle. I'm actually not sure why the height of these two top bars here aren't lining up. They're supposed to be 81 pixels in height. And I'm going to go over to the sidebar's top bar, and it's 81 pixels as well. So that's weird. I'm going to go and use our web development tools in the browser. 
bits. So this is supposed to be 81 pixels, but it kind of looks weird. Something weird is going on here. So it's set to shrink. So the item was set to shrink and it has a flex string of one. So I'm, I'm thinking it's some kind of issue with the flex, flex box. So we have uh, one parent container, we have one flex container and one button element and the final flex container here. So I think this is, oh, we forgot the flex one. So we have like three containers. So one for the top bar, one for the new chat button and the one for the scrollable part here. And we forgot to let that last container grow on its own using flex one. So now we have flex one, it should be fixed. So if you guys are unsure about all this flex box stuff, you can just go to cssstricks.com and they have like a really good website and I'm pretty sure flex grow is here as well. So like flex grow, yeah, flex grow is here and we have flex one as well. So basically what I'm doing is I'm using flex grow to expand, to let the heights of those containers expand on its own. And with that fixed, you can continue working on our top bar. So I'm just going to give this a padding of five so that it's not stuck to the left hand side of that border. And we can also, let's see what else. We need the, the heading, of course. So let's do it like a heading. And let's import that. The heading should say like user at gmail.com. And let's see if it matches up. So I think we can like specify the size and we can give the size of large, so LG. And that's a bit smaller. We can give this avatar a margin end of three so that's not stuck you can actually just use margin left as well or margin like right and it works but the benefits to using margin end is that this is more friendly to for those kind of right to left or left to right screens so we're using start and end instead of left and right so the top bar is now done and we can go and work on the bottom bar so i'm going to have like a bottom bar maybe you can make our own component for that as well so like const of bottom bar equals to an arrow function let's return like like bottom bar for now let's go and add that here so top bar and bottom bar in our flex container and our bottom bar is going to appear on the right hand side which is not what we want so we can give a direction of column to this flex container and it should be stacked like that we we'll, we can also give this bottom bar like a, uh, let's get let's just make the flex container here and give it a background color so it's easier for us to style. So let's do flex. Let's give it a background color of like blue 100. So we don't see that right now. So we might as well give it a height of like some arbitrary value. So that's our bottom bar. And we have to align our bottom bar in the bottom of the screen. And we can do that by adding like the chat area in the middle, which is gonna be a flex container. And let's just give it a flex one. So it will grow. So now we should have it separated. So we have a top bar, we have a flex container, and we have a bottom bar. So top, bot, middle, and bottom. So three sections. I'm just gonna make this all in one line for now. So it's easier for us. It's easier on the eyes. So let's do that. All right, so one, two, and then three sections. So now let's continue working on the bottom bar here. Inside of the bottom bar, I'm gonna have like an input from chakra and I can actually get rid of the height now and get rid of the background color as well so that's our input we can give this input a few uh, few props like placeholder equal to type a message dot dot, dot. and that should show up like that we also want to give this flex container like a padding because we don't want the input to be stuck to the edges of the screen so let's have a padding of three maybe that's much nicer. So this will definitely work because you can type messages here and you can click on a button to send the messages. But what won't work is if you hit enter like you normally would in normal chat apps. Because this is just a naked input and it's not part of any forms and it doesn't have a submit button. So when you hit enter, HTML doesn't know what to do because it's not a form. So to fix that, we can add a form here using form control from Chakra UI. And of course, we still need a submit button even though if we want to hide it, we can just use like hidden, but it still has to be a type of submit because it's part of the form. And let's auto close, let's actually just close this button and like hit, like write submit. It's not going to show up anyway because it's a type of hidden. And the thing is, if I try to type something here, let's type something. Uh, let's see if it shows up. 
it doesn't show up. So basically, sometimes auto the autocomplete shows up, so you can use autocomplete equals to off to turn off the autocomplete. Now what you could do next is you could go ahead and add an icon button to the side of this sidebar, but I'm not going to do that because it's going to make this video crazy long. Alright, so it's now time to work on the chat bubbles. So let's go and look for the parent container to contain all the chat bubbles and make our very first chat bubble inside of this container. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to create a flex container to contain this first message. And we're going to have a text in here that says, um, this is a dummy message. And it looks like we have to import this from Chakra UI. So let's import that. And let's give this flex a background color of blue of 100. So now this is what you see. But the thing is, we're going to have multiple uh, con components to contain these messages. And that's going to look like this, which is not what we want because we want it to be vertically stacked. So we can do direction equals to column here in the parent container. And they will be vertically stacked, which is very nice. And of course, we can go ahead and style these and give it like a, a width of fit content so it doesn't extend to the edge of the screen. And we're going to give it a min width as well. So just in case we have like very short messages, because let me just demonstrate. Let me just like make this an A. You can see that the width is going to be so small. So we can make a min width property and give it like 100 pixels. So now we have min width. And what else? We want to make it rounded, of course. So we're going to give it like a border radius of large. So it's now rounded at the corners. And you can give it a padding of 3. And let's make it spaced out a bit more. So let's give it a margin of 1. So that already looks much, much nicer. And the thing is, we're just making this for sent message. We want uh, another type of styling for a received message. Let's say this message here is a received message. So we can give it a different color first. Green, 100. And let's align to the right side. So we can do align self equals to flex end so that will go to the right side and if you don't know what this property is you can go to the css tricks that i've mentioned earlier and just look at this property called align self now there are a few things i want to do to the parent container of these chat messages so the first thing i want to do is give it a padding of top to become four so that it's not stuck to the top bar there and you want to give it a margin x of maybe five so it's not stuck to the sides so that's much better and another thing I want to show you is that if I clone these chat messages a lot of times, you can see that the whole page starts to scroll again. And this is not what we want. So what we can do is go back and look for the parent container here. Let's give it a overflow X to be scroll. And that looks much better because you can see now, now that's how we're scrolling. And we also want to get rid of the scroll bars using the SX prop. So scroll bar width of none and this is very exciting because we're now done with all of the styling and chakra ui stuff so in the next video we're going to start working on the actual functionality of this site so the firebase authentication cloud storage and everything like that in this chapter we'll be going over how to implement firebase authentication in our chat app so I'm going to go to the root of our app and we're going to get a blank page because in index.js we have the head but we have no content. Which is why I'm going to add the sidebar here. Sidebar. And let's save. So now we should see the sidebar appear in our main page. And the next thing we're going to do is check if the user is authenticated. Because if the user isn't, then we should display the login component. Which is what we've done previously right here. This is the login component. So before I do anything to the login component, I'm first going to create a Firebase project and link that to this React application. So I'm going to head over to Firebase console and let's create a new project. We can call this um, chat app. And then let's accept the Firebase terms, hit continue. We don't need Google Analytics for this project and we're going to give it some time to load here. And our project is now ready, so I'm going to hit continue and it will bring us to the console. All right, so now we have a brand new project. We're going to create a new web app and let's register the app as um, React, maybe, React.js. And then we can register the app like this and we're going to have to add the Firebase SDK. So I already know what's going to ask us to do. So I'm going to go over to my terminal here and let's uh, 
let's go and stop the development server and let's yarn at Firebase. So this will install the Firebase SDK to our project and if I go back to the browser you can see it's already going to ask us to do that using npm. And I'm going to copy this entire thing and go put that in a file called Firebase config .js in my root directory. Let's just paste that there. So if you can see here, it asks us to add SDKs for specific Firebase products that we want to use. So I'm just going to delete this and let's import get auth, uh, get auth from Firebase slash auth. And let us come down here and do const auth equals to get auth and we can export auth. So we're going to import this auth object from other files later on in order to work with this authentication handle. And then I'm going to go back to my console here and let's continue to the console. So first of all, let us go to um, authentication right here and let us get started. All right, so as you can see here, we have a lot of different methods we can let our users sign into our app. We can use email password authentication we can use Microsoft Authentication, Facebook, even GitHub. But in this project, let's just use Google. So I'm going to click Google and enable that. And what this does is it allows you to authenticate your users using their Google account. So now that Google is enabled, I'm going to go ahead and install React Firebase Hooks, which is a way for us to implement authentication using uh, pre-built hooks in this NPM package. Of course, you can just go ahead and read the documentation and do it manually. Uh, using the, the Firebase docs, but instead I'm just going to install React Firebase hooks because it's easier and faster sometimes. So let's copy that and go to our terminal here. Let's paste and all right. And then I'm going to go and open up the documentation. So let's see authentication hooks. That's what I want. All right. So let's look at the documentation here. We have this hook called use auth state, and we can import that using the statement which I'm just going to copy. And let's actually just yarn dev and start our server right now. And let's go to app.js and import that. So I'm going to import use auth state, and let's go back to the documentation and, and copy this. So let's paste that here. So as you can see, use auth state takes in auth and options, which we don't really have any options right now, so I can just get rid of that and then it'll return user loading an error. So we have to pass auth or it's going to throw us an error. So let's import auth, um, whoops, auth from dot slash um, firebase, dot dot slash firebase config. So remember where we exported auth, the auth handle. So we're just going to import that and chuck that in the use auth state parameters right now. And then now that we have the we have access to the user loading and error objects, what we can do is we can say if loading. So if loading is true, we can add a spinner here, uh, so that we don't let the user access the website when everything is still loading. So I'm going to do chakra provider because you always want to wrap the entire page inside of a chakra provider element. And let me do something from uh, chakra UI slash React, which is spinner. So I'm going to do a spinner. Uh, size let's just let's just see how spinner looks like right so instead of if loading I'm just gonna say if true so that we can see it right now let's go and refresh this and see if there's a spinner so there's no spinner of course I forgot to write return and we have to return this like that and it's so we see the spinner right now and it's stuck to the top left so I forgot to import center and let's do center and put a spinner inside of that center element, which will give view a height of 100% view height. Let's see now. So it's now in the center, but it's kind of small. So what we can do is we can give it a size of XL. Yeah, so that looks way better. All right, so now we can change this from if true to if loading, and let's go back and refresh the page, and uh, let's see. So you see for a moment there the spinner showed up because uh, it was loading and right after that it's just switched back to the normal component and that's good so now we can work on the user so if the user is not signed in what we're going to do is we're going to return the login component right and then we have to remember to wrap that in the chakra provider or else the styles are just not going to show up and there we go 
So now we have our login component here, but I still need to implement functionality to this button right here because if I click on it, it, ha it does nothing right now. And that's because in my button component, I don't have this thing called on click, which I'll add right now. And that's adding an arrow function that we'll populate later. So the next thing we're gonna do is go to Firebase, React Firebase hooks, the documentation side, and let's look for use sign in with Google. So this hook is the hook that we're gonna use. And I'm just gonna copy this line and paste it just right here. Let's paste it right here. And then we're gonna have to import that. So import use sign in with Google there. And let's take a look at this hook. This hook takes in an auth handle, which we have to import from the Firebase config.js file. So import auth and it returns sign in with Google user loading an error. So if we look at the documentation, you can see that sign in with Google is actually a function that you can call that takes in two parameters, which is the scope and the custom OAuth parameters. But we're going to deal with that later. So let's first call this function here, sign in with Google inside of this error function. And I'm going to go back to our application here. Let's refresh this just to be safe. And let's click on this button. And it shows us the Google authentication uh, page, which I can gladly just click. And once we're in, it should change to the sidebar, which is much better right now. All right, so we're now signed in. So now what? Now, of course, we're going to do the logout functionality. So this button right here is going to do the logout functions so let's go back to our sidebar here and look for that button that's an icon button and this right here this icon button and you can add like an on click and give it an arrow function again so how do you sign out users in google firebase authentication uh, if you look at documentation right here there's something called sign out which is something you can import from firebase slash auth which is what i'm going to do i'm just going to take this copy it and paste it right here, except for the fact that we don't need to import get auth here. So we just need sign out and we can just write sign out here, sign out. Okay, so let's refresh this page. And now the moment I hit this button, we should be signed out. And it gives us um, an error because we have to sign out and pass it an auth handle, I think, which we, are in, which we will import from Firebase config. And let's save that, let's refresh this. Let's try to sign out again. So I hit that. So yeah, it works. All right, so one small issue that we're gonna fix before moving on to the next section is that when I click this button, this window shows up. But before we get to choose which account to log in with, it's just gonna log us in with the default account. And that is bad because we don't get to choose and switch accounts. So I'm just gonna log out here. And we're gonna use this thing called custom OAuth parameters to modify the functionality of this uh, Firebase hook. So if I go back to my code here, I can provide some scopes and some custom OAuth parameters, which I'm going to just do right now. Let's go to our login here. So the first argument is the scopes, which we don't want to change. And that's a string. So I'm just going to leave it as an empty string. And the next parameter is some custom OAuth parameters, which is an object. And what do we put in here? And that depends on what the documentation says. So we can go to the Google website and go to the documentation. And you can see there's an OAuth parameter called prompt. And this prompt lets you choose the different types of prompts. So this select account is the one that we're interested in because this will allow our user to select multiple different accounts when logging in. So let's just copy prompt. Let's just do that as a key. And then the value will be select account and that will be a string. All right, so now that we have saved that, we can go and refresh our page and let's click on sign in with Google. So this time we should be able to select our account and log in or use a different account totally. And now I'm realizing something and that is our scroll is broken again because we imported the sidebar into index.js and that's a totally different file. So I'm just going to fix that by giving it a box and putting the sidebar in a box which has a height of 100% view height. And let's see if that fixed the issue and it doesn't. Okay, so I have to go to the sidebar here and let's restrain the height to 100% of the parent container's height. So that should fix it. And yeah, it's fixed. In previous chapters, we've gone over how to build the UI for the sidebar that we have here. And in this chapter, we're going to go over the functionality and how to implement the functionality into the sidebar instead of just having hard-coded values using Firestore. So I'm going to sign in with two different tabs here. 
one using Einstein's account and one using Max's account. And what you're going to see is that we're going to have a sidebar here and the same sidebar right here. And that's because all of the values are hard coded. So let's go ahead and change that. But before I do that, I actually want to do some housekeeping here because you can see we have create next tab here uh, as the title of the tab. And I want to change that real quick. So let's go to index.js right here. We're going to just change this to chat app and we should see it become chat app. I'm also going to go to another page that we have, which is slash chat slash whatever the ID is. And you're going to see localhost colon 3000 slash chat slash whatever. So let's change that inside of our chat page and ID.js. So here we're going to import uh, head from next slash head. And let's go to the return here and just add the head. And to do that, I'm just going to um, add it in this flex container here. So let's do head and let's make a title. Let's just call it chat app. All right, okay, so that's fixed. Now let's worry about the sidebar and the profile picture here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to React Firebase hooks documentation, go to authentication hooks again, and let's copy um, use auth state. So I'm going to bring this over to our application in the sidebar component, and let's import this like that. And I'm going to go down to use auth state here and let us uh, look for this line here, bring it into our code as well um, inside of the sidebar component. And we actually don't need loading an error. So I'm just going to get rid of that. So now we have the user and also we don't need options. So I'll just get rid of that as well. Auth is going to be imported from Firebase config. So now we have our user object and that's really, that's really good because we can go to our text here and just replace this with user dot display name and in avatar instead of just an empty source we can just do user dot profile actually is I think it's photo URL that's right okay now let's go back to our Firefox here let's refresh this you can see now that instead of just having the hard-coded value of L Einstein and that default avatar in both tabs I actually have different names now so this is actually going to be fetching the data from the Firebase backend itself all right, so we're now done with authentication and we can move on to using Firestore to store all of our chats here in the sidebar. So to do that, I'm going to show you the system that we're going to use in this project. So here I have two chats here and uh, the moment I click on the chat, uh, Next.js will we'll use Next.js router to re redirect us to the URL of slash chat slash the ID. And that is basically going to give us access to that dynamic ID parameter that we added here in our file structure. So here, uh, this ID is going to be the ID of the document of the chat. So in our Firestore database, we're going to have this structure right here, which is a collection of chats. And in this collection, we're going to have multiple documents and each document represents a, a single chat. So here I have two chats. So we'll have two documents. And inside of that document, we're going to have a list of users, which is all of the users that are involved in this chat. And also we're going to have messages which is going to be a sub collection of all of the messages so we're going to deal with this messages collection sub collection later on so right now we just need to focus on the users here because we just need to know which users are involved in this chat so that we can list out all of the usernames in the sidebar so i can actually show you how it looks like in the firebase console so we're going to have like chats which is a collection which contains all of the chats so right now we have two chats like this right and in this chat, we're going to have a list of users of all of the users involved. And we're going to have messages, which is a sub collection that contains all of the details of the messages. All right, so let's get to work and add the Firestore SDK to our project. So I'm going to go to Firebase config and let's clone that. And instead of get auth, we're going to get Firestore from Firebase slash Firestore. And then we're going to do const db equals to get Firestore. And let's export that as well. I'm also going to go to our console and create a database in Cloud Firestore section. Let's start in test mode and let's hit next. Um, we can change, you can just leave this or whatever you want. We can enable that and let it provision for a bit. All right, so the provisioning is now done. I'm going to start a new collection by the name of chats. And here I'm going to refer to our structure here. So we have a collection of chats and we're going to have individual documents that store the information for each individual chat. So I'm going to just generate an automatic ID and we're going to have users, which is going to be an array. 
So this users array will store all of the users that are involved in this chat. So let's get our first user and copy the email and paste it here. Let's add another user. So we have two users now. I'm going to hit save and we should see it appear right here. So there's our document. Now what I'm going to do is go and use Cloud Firestore hooks from React Firebase hooks and just um, import use collection and let's go to our VS Code and sidebar and let's import this use collection hook and we can import this line as well so that we can copy and paste that in our sidebar component. I'm going to get rid of the options right here because we don't have any options right now and for query, we're going to query for a collection by the name of chat. So I'm going to have to import that collection reference from Firebase slash Firestore. Let's do collection and we're going to target the collection by name of chats. And I think for the first argument, we're going to have to provide the DB handle, which we have to import from our, our Firebase config like that. Okay, so now we're going to get our snapshot and we can console.log the snapshot to see what it looks like. Let's see that in action. So I'm going to open up my console here. And let's zoom in a little. So you can see here we have our snapshot object, which isn't that useful for us because we still need to get the data from the documents inside of this snapshot. So you see docs here. This is going to be an array of all the documents that is inside of this snapshot. So what we can do is we can do snapshot.docs and we can map through each individual document and extract the data like that. So let's go ahead and do const chats equals to snapshot dot docs dot map and we can extract the data inside of this map function but one thing to note is that in my console you can see that sometimes the snapshot returns undefined and that's when firebase is still querying the data so if you do undefined dot docs dot map it's going to give you an error because undefined doesn't have the property of docs right so we can use the question mark operator here to say that only if snapshot is defined then we'll do this so in the map function we're going to get a doc and then we're going to just return uh, we're going to return an object that has id of doc.id and we're going to use the spread operator to do doc.data and spread that into this object that we have right now so this step is actually quite important to include the id of the documents because later on inside of our sidebar when we're going to do like we, when we're going to click on these individual uh, chats you're going to have to redirect the user to the id inside of the URL and so that's why we need to be sure to extract the ID as well instead of just getting the document data. Alright so now we can console.log chats and see what we get in the console. So let's go ahead and refresh this and we should get an array of a single object because that's what we have here, a single document and in this document you're going to have the ID of the document as well as the users. So I'm going to create another document here. Let's add another document. And we can do um, actually users. And it's going to be array. Let's do test.gmail.com. And let's add another user, which is our current user. Let's save that. So now when I refresh this, I should get two documents in this array. All right. So in this array, we're going to have two documents. The first document is between test and Einstein and the next document is between Einstein and Planck. Alright, so we can actually replace our chats here with the data that we're getting from Firestore. So I'll delete all but one chat and inside of the chat component, instead of returning just a single chat, we're going to return chats.map and we'll map through each individual chat and return this component. So let's cut that and let's paste it here with proper indentation like that and we're getting this error because missing key prop for element in iterator so let's just give this key um, to the flex parent component I'll just do key equals to math dot random this is a very terrible way of assigning keys to um, uh, elements when you're using dot map because sometimes map dot math dot random doesn't guarantee you a unique number but I'm just gonna do that for convenience sake so we can just replace user at gym.com with chat.users. Let's save that and see what we get in the browser. Let's refresh that and we get chats is not defined. All right, so we don't actually have access to the chats variable here because this is outside of our scope. 
So we are gonna have to just let's get rid of this console log and let's just paste the chat here. And let's change this chat over to um, a chat list function and wrap that in curly braces. And instead of calling this capital letter chat, I'm just gonna do chat list like that. And here I'm just gonna add a question mark just in case chat is still undefined. And let's go back to Firefox and refresh and see if we do get the error still. Okay, though we're not getting any errors right now, this is still not what we really want because here in the sidebar, we're getting all of the emails here, including our own email, which is not what we want. So here in our code, you can see that chat.users is what we are using and chat.users is an array of all the emails. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this problem by creating a utility function called getOtherEmail.js and let's const getOtherEmail equals to an arrow function and we'll export default get other email. So I'm actually gonna take in two things in the arguments. So I'm gonna take in users, which is the list that we had just now of the two users involved in the chat, and also the current user, which is the user object that we're getting from the use auth hook. So let's return users, sometimes users will be empty, so I'll just add an extra question mark, dot filter. So we'll filter user and we'll see if the user is not equal to the current user. Now remember that current user is actually an object that we're getting from the use auth hook. So this is not actually the user's email. We need to access that email by using the dot email property. And we'll get the first result and return that. Now let's head back over to our sidebar and I'm gonna save this and import, import get other email. So here instead of just returning chat.users, I'll return get other email and takes in the users um, the users list which is chat.users and of course our current user which is what we're getting from the use auth state hook let's save that and go back to our browser and see if the results are uh, are what we want so let's see test at gmail.com which is the opposite user as well as plank so this is working as intended but there's still a slight issue that i'm going to show you by creating a new document Let's make a new chat. So we're gonna have users and this has to be an array. And let's say that, that we have a conversation between Plank, which is not our account, our account is Einstein, and test at gmail.com. So this conversation between these two people does not involve Einstein, which is our current account right here. So let me go ahead and save this document and let's go to our panel. And you can see that we actually have two different Plank contacts here. And one of them is our chat with Plank. Another one is the chat between Plank and Test, which doesn't involve Albert Einstein. So you can probably tell that this right here is a huge major security issue, especially if this is a real chat app. So one of the ways we can solve this is of course, to use the Firestore rules to secure which user has access to which data. But I'm not gonna do that in this project and instead I'm just gonna use um, JavaScript here and do a dot filter and we're gonna filter the chat to make sure that the chat has something to do with our user so users dot includes our current user dot email and this current user is the user that we are logged in as and let's just save this and refresh the page so right now you can see it works we only have test and one plank chat and if I go ahead and add a new document that has um, users and let's do an array of like some, some random user at gmail.com and another random user at gmail.com. So this has nothing to do with Albert Einstein. So I'm gonna save that, and let's refresh this and we should not see that appear in our sidebar anymore. And perfect. Now let's make it so that when I click on these chats, it's gonna redirect me to slash chat slash whatever ID the chat is. So I'm gonna go to the code here and add on click. So on click, equals to an arrow function that runs a redirect function that we're gonna make ourselves. it doesn't exist yet and it's gonna take in a chat.id so let's go ahead and do const redirect and takes in an id and here we're gonna have to use next.js router to do this so let's import use router from next slash router and in here I'm actually gonna have to use const router equals to use router which means I can't have this redirect function outside of my component so I have to bring it back in here 
because or else I won't have access to the router uh, handle. So let's do router.push and then slash chat slash and let's format this to include the ID. And this should be it. So I'm going to save that and let's come here. So when I click on this, it's let's refresh this. All right. And let's go to localhost slash 3000. And let's click on one of these. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see it redirected us to slash chat slash whatever the ID is. So that's perfect. And I'm going to click on test. And it's going to redirect us to the different IDs as you can see in the URL bar. All right, there's one thing left for us to do. And that is this new chat button. So I'm going to go and look for that button, which is right here, new chat. And then let's do on click equals to an arrow function that we can call new chat and let's go and make that function up here so const new chat equals to so in here what I'm what I can do is I can do const input equals to a prompt so enter email of chat recipient and there we go and now let's go and see if it works so hit that all good all right, okay. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add doc, add a new, create a new document in our Firestore uh, collection here in the chats collection. So what we can do is we have to import add doc from Firebase slash Firestore. So add doc and um, okay. So in here, we're gonna just await because add doc is an API call. So we need async and await and that means we need to add an async here. And let's await at doc and the first argument is going to be the reference right here so we can call collection and pass in db and chats as usual then the next thing is the object which is the data object so data objects going to contain users and it's going to be an array so user dot email and input so user email is our own user our uh, current user and then input is the new user, the new email that we're going to get from the input. All right, save. Let's go and new chat. Let's say um, hello at gmail.com. Say OK. And hello shows up here. And just to make sure, I'm going to go to the console and make sure that hello is here as well. But we're not completely done with this yet because if I come here and I try to create a new chat with test.gmail.com again, which already exists as you can see in the sidebar, it's going to duplicate and that's not ideal. So we're, now we're going to have two records that has our conversation between Einstein and test. So run one right here, another one right here. So let me just delete this document real quick. Uh, let's start delete. All right, so to do that, we're going to implement a few checks in our new chat here. So we're going to write a function called chat exists and it's going to take in an email and it's going to compare this email with our current user's email and check if a record of that already exists in the chats snapshot. So let's do chats.find chat. For each chat, the criteria would be chat.users.includes user.email. This is our current user email as well as chat.users.includes the email that we're getting as the input here in this function. Then here we can just write a conditional here. So if not chat dot exists, which means if the chat doesn't exist, only then we'll proceed with this await. So let's move the await in here. And I'm going to take this opportunity as well to do a few more validations. So I don't want to be able to create a new chat with myself. So I'm going to make sure that input is not equal to our current user's email. So now I should be able to go to my chat app and try to create a new chat with test at gmail.com which already exists let's hit ok so nothing happens and it doesn't add a new record to the firebase backend so that's good in this chapter we'll go ahead and finish up the last part of our course which is to make this chat and get the data from firestore so the first thing i'm going to do is look at this id here in the url and get that data from within the code so i'm going to utilize this thing called router which is going to be imported from um, from next slash router I believe all right and the next thing I'm gonna do is go over to my chat component and do const router equals to use router and here I'm gonna do const ID which is something I'm gonna extract from router dot query 
and now I can console.log ID and let's see what we get. So refresh that and open up the console and we should see our ID show up. So there it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and create some dummy messages in the back end of Firebase console instead of having it be hard coded here. So I'm going to follow this structure right here, uh, which is the messages sub collection. And I'm going to go ahead and create that now. So let's look at the ID. So the ID of our chat is EXORP and it's right here, EXORP. And let's start a new collection. We can call this collection messages. And we're going to auto generate this ID for the first document in this collection. And let's see what we're going to have in here. So we're going to have a text, some timestamp and a sender. Um, all right, so let me just copy this email re real quick. And so text will be hello there. And then we'll have a timestamp that is a type of timestamp. We'll just leave it as today. And we also add a new field called sender. Let's have the value be our email. Let's hit save. And we should see that appear there. All right. I'm also going to create another document and have the text be an older message. And let the timestamp be from yesterday. So fifth. Let's add the final field of sender. And this time, instead of us being the sender, we'll have the opposite user be the sender, which is test at gmail.com. Hit save. So now that we have our documents here, we have to find a way to fetch these data from Firestore with our code. So I'm going to go and use a hook for this. Let's copy that import line and paste it here. Instead of copying use collection, I'm going to use collection data, which is a different hook here. Use collection data. And I will copy this line and paste it in our chat component down here. I'll get rid of the TypeScript and make it all in one line. We actually don't need loading error snapshot, so I'll just get rid of all of that. And I can rename values to messages. Let me get rid of this console log. We don't actually need the options here, so I'll get rid of that. And the query, I'm just going to rename that to Q. And we can do a const q equals to the query. And I can just straight away query for a collection reference and give it a database handle, give it chats, which is the name of the collection, ID of the document, and then the messages subcollection. So this ID is coming from our router's query. And I can just leave it like that. But instead, I'm just going to take an extra step and add a query here from Firebase. Um, let's cut that and bring it all the way here. Because the reason for me doing this is so that I can use order by an order by timestamp so that I'm getting the messages in an ascending order. Now this collection reference may look strange to some of you because we're actually referencing a sub collection here and if you don't like using the comma notation you can always use the slash notation which is the standard that you would use in an operating system and you can change the string into a formatted string to, to format the ID and this is a totally valid way of referring to the collection. I do have other videos on my channel that talk specifically about subcollections and stuff like query and order by, so you can check those out if you want to. So now that we have access to the messages, we can go ahead and console log to see what it looks like in the browser. Let's go and refresh this. And we're going to get DB is not defined, which is fine because I referenced the DB handle here in the collection reference, but I forgot to import that. So import db from Firebase config and let's come and look at this again, refresh. And we're going to get the messages in our console, which is an array of two objects. So the first object has a text of an older message and the second object has a text of hello there. All right, so now I'm going to replace all of these dummy messages with our actual Firestore data. So let me delete all of these and I'm going to move it into its own function called get messages which will return all of the messages components. So const get messages equals to um, messages dot map. And I need to include the question mark here because sometimes Firebase takes a, a bit of time to load the messages. And then we do message and let's return this. And we're going to get this red underline because we need a key prop. I'm going to use math.random. So again, don't do this in actual production environments. So math.random. I'm going to replace this dummy message with our actual message, which is msg.text. And let's save and refresh. So this looks pretty nice. We have both of our messages here. But the issue is that this message is a received message. And this is a sent message. And the received message has to be on the right-hand side. 
So I can differentiate the two messages by creating a new const called sender and sender be equal to if message dot sender is equal to our current user so current user dot email and I don't think we have access to our current user yet because we have to import that use auth hook we can import that from app.js so I'm going to import use auth state and let's just paste it here and we can also import um, this this line and I'm going to put that in our chat component. We don't need loading an error. We just need the user object to get the current user's email. And it requires an auth argument. So we have to import auth as well from our Firebase config. And let's see how it looks like. So with the flex here, I'm going to just add a property called align self. Again, this is coming from flex, flex box. So we'll use a ternary operator that says if sender is true, then align self will be flex start or else actually this should be a question mark not a colon and the colon will be here or else it would be flex end and then in the background here instead of just having it to be blue all the time I'm going to use another ternary operator here as well to say if sender is true it will be blue or else it would be green with a weight of 100 let's save and See, that looks much better. Another thing is that when I change between the chats from the sidebar, you can see that the top bar doesn't change. And that's because user at gmail.com is a hard-coded value. And instead of using hard-coded value, we can use uh, users from the user array inside of our chat document. And we can use our utility function that we coded in the previous chapter to get the other email of the other user, which is in the chat. So I'm going to import um, use document data because this time we are fetching data from a document the document of the chat instead of the collection and I'm going to come down here and do const chat equals to use document data and the first argument is going to be the document reference which means I'll use doc DB and then chats which is the collection name and the ID of the document which we're getting from the router and after that we can go ahead and console.log the chat for now to see what it's giving us so let me refresh this and you can see that right now our chat is returning uh, an array of users which is test as well as Einstein so that's all well and then I'm gonna go ahead in our top bar here instead of using it at gmail.com I'm gonna just do um, email and email is something I can get from the props here so email and down here at the top bar right right here so email will be equal to get other email and we have to get other email let's see what's the first argument which is users which is an array and the current user so users will be chat dot users is that right let me see uh, yeah that's right chat I'm gonna get rid of this console log and then I'm also going to give this um, user dot email which is our current user actually it's just user because it's going to get the email in this function that's right okay so i'm going to go back to the browser get other email is not defined because we have to import that so import get other email let's refresh this and it should give us the email test at gmail.com let's go to hello and this is hello which is all well and as well as plank Congratulations for making it to the final part, final element that we're going to work with, and that is this bar down here. So technically, you should type something here and hit enter, and it will send a message. And I just realized the autocomplete is still on, and I'm going to check to make sure that, yeah, the autocomplete is in the wrong place. It's not supposed to be in the button, but instead at the input. So let me fix that, and let's see. All right, so that's fixed. All right, so let's go look at the code for this bottom bar it's right here and if you notice the input is not a uh, controlled input at the moment and that means we're not storing the state of the input in the react state so to fix that I'm just gonna import use state from react and let's go ahead and do const input and set input equals to use state nothing fancy here and then we're just gonna do on change equals to um, s uh, an arrow function and then we're going to do set input and then e dot target dot value and then we have to put e here all right and then we should be able to just like console dot log input just to make sure it's working and let's do 
hi hello all right that's working okay so i can delete console log and go to the button here and on click equals to uh, send message i can actually do like e and then send message of e and go here and create this function called send message equals an arrow function it takes an e and we actually since this is what we're doing we don't even need to write this e is this arrow function we can just straight away put send message here and we're going to do e dot prevent default and the reason we're doing this is because we want to prevent the default behavior of the form to refresh the page every time you hit submit we don't want that we just want the button to click and run this send message function and in this function I'm going to await add doc because add doc is an API call to Firestore and since we're using await we have to write async here so async and add doc is going to take in it's going to take in a collection reference as to like which collection you're going to add this document to and the collection takes in a database handle takes in the name of the collection and it takes in the id and messages actually this is just like a sub collection so we can just do a string format here so chats slash id which is the id of the current chat document and then slash messages and then in this after this we're going to add in like a, an object here which is the data object and the text will be the input value the sender will be the user dot email timestamp will just be server timestamp now server timestamp is a way we can add a timestamp to our, op our data object here and you can read that from our firestore documentation here server timestamp it's actually a data type that you can push to firestore to store a timestamp value from the server and then finally after all of these i'm going to just do set input of empty string because the moment you hit enter we want to clear that input so let's save that and see if everything works i'm going to refresh the page and see if everything works so let's type test and hit enter and nothing happened so let's go to the code and check what went wrong here and oh i see it we are using on click here for the button and this is something that we shouldn't do because we are not actually clicking any buttons instead we should do like on submit in the form control here and let's write send message and for this on submit to work in the chakra ui form control we have to use the as prop so we're going to render the form control as an actual html form itself let's hit save and then we refresh this and let's type um, test message and hit enter and we get this error so i think i know what's going on here it says that id is not defined and if we go to the code and look at our bottom bar we can see that we're trying to access the id here inside of the bottom bar component whereas the id is actually just stored in this chat uh, component which is totally separate from this bottom bar component so we can pass that as a prop here id and then um, here then we should have access to the id here then what i'm going to do is go to the bottom bar component and pass the prop of id equals to id let's see if it works now i'm going to refresh this and it should work so let me type test hit enter it says user is not defined all right so let's go and fix this issue too so user is not defined which is right here user.email we're trying to send the user's email as the sender so let's just do user and then we can do user equals to user because the user again is handled by this chat component now um, refresh again and test yes it finally works so that works but it isn't clearing our input and maybe we have to check what's going on there so here I have to set input to an empty string so that it clears the input after we hit enter. And then let's refresh this one last time. Hopefully it works now. And test does it work now. Hit enter and it still doesn't set the input to empty string. So let's see what's going on here. Hmm. All right, I think I know what's going on here. So in this input here, I forgot to set the value equals to input. All right, that's that's a rookie mistake right there. Uh, let's see if it works now. Does it clear the input now? Hit enter, and it does. It clears the input. All right. So a cut just happened, and all I did was I took the sidebar and the bottom bar component out of this id.js file, and I moved them to their own files in topbar.js as well as bottombar.js in the components folder. All right, let's go back to Firefox one last time. 
So here I've populated this chat with a bit more messages now so that it overflows the scroll. And I'm going to show you that if I send a new message and I hit enter, it's going to send but it's going to be underneath. It's not going to be visible until I scroll it, then it appears. So I'm going to do a quick JavaScript trick to automatically scroll this chat every time you send a new message. So to do that, we can create an invisible div at the bottom here, at the bottom of the chat messages. And then we can use scroll into view in order to scroll to that invisible div at the bottom. So here, right after all of my get messages, I'm just going to create an empty div, which is going to be invisible. Give it a ref of bottom of chat. Then let's go use um, use ref from React, which we have to import. So import use ref from React because we are using the reference here to reference this div element. And then here I'm going to just const um, bottom of chat equals to use ref. And then I'm going to come here and paste a code snippet, which is a use effect code. And this use effect will basically run every time the messages, the messages um, variable or the constant here gets updated. So let's save that and refresh our page. And I think we have to import use effect as well. So use effect, let's refresh this. So now it scrolls, you see it even scrolls to the bottom the moment we load this page. I can hit send new message and it will scroll up the moment I enter. So we are at the end of this long course and I want to conclude this course with a final demo to show you how this entire thing works. So I'm going to sign in with Google here on my right hand side, which is a different account by the way. So I'm going to type a message here in the left, left pane and in the right pane it should show up in real time. So demo message, hit enter and you can see it appears in both windows. I can say reply message and it appears in both windows as well. And that's it for my full stack React Next.js Chakra UI Firebase chat app course. All of the code is going to be in the link in the description as well as a demo link that you can go and try out the chat app itself. And also, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I do read every single comment that I get in my YouTube channel. And, and check out my other videos, especially those on Firebase and React.